a new podcast from the creators of Up and Vanished. Louisville police are searching for a missing 24-year-old woman. When I read about Alana Chen's disappearance, I couldn't look away. <laughs> a shy girl from Boulder who wanted to be a nun since she was a teenager. So Alana was like sneaking out to go to church. But she kept a secret, one that was slowly tearing her apart. I didn't know she was attracted to girls. No, she didn't tell me. Yes, the mother says her daughter first opened up to a priest at her church when she was just 14 years old. However, the church denies any conversion therapy was done. She didn't tell me. She told him. She confessed to him. From Tenderfoot TV comes a new podcast about the price we pay to belong and the systems that pay no price at all. This is Dear Alana. Listen for free on the iHeartRadio app or Apple Podcasts. For an exclusive binge of the whole season, subscribe to Tenderfoot Plus at tenderfootplus.com. Set summer in motion with the most adventurous Honda vehicles yet, like the Passport and Pilot Trail Sport, and the Ridgeline, built for better off-road performance and engineered for more adventure. Summer's here. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get a 3.9% APR on a 2023 Honda Pilot, a 2.9% APR on a 2023 Passport, and a 0.9% APR on a 2023 Ridgeline. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or visit your local Honda dealer today. See dealer for financing details. Hello. From Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. This month, we're talking about folk heroes, women whose lives and stories took on mythic proportions. Today we're talking about a heroic woman who stood tall when her country was under siege. Let's talk about Kainau Siemens Doher Hasselaar. Kainau Siemens Doher Hasselaar was born into a well-known family in 1526. Her hometown, Harlem, is a city in the northwest region of the Netherlands. When she was young, she married a shipbuilder. The couple had four children together before Kainau's husband passed away in the early 1560s. In the wake of his death, Kainau took over running the shipyard. This was not uncommon for Dutch women. Because Harlem was a major trading port, many men worked at sea. They were away from their wives and children for long periods of time, so the women ran the businesses. Because of this, Dutch women had more autonomy and independence than many women in other European countries. Over time, Kay now became a well-respected businesswoman. In the 16th century, the Netherlands was under Spanish rule. But by the mid-1560s, the Dutch became dissatisfied with this dynamic. In 1566, disparate rebel groups began revolting against the Spanish government. This kicked off the Eighty Years' War. The Spanish king, Philip II, sent the Duke of Alva to the Netherlands to send a very simple message, cooperate or face the consequences. Many Dutch communities were nervous about the idea of a full-blown revolution. To make matters worse, any town that resisted was plundered and burnt to the ground. As a result, many cities immediately surrendered when the Spanish forces arrived. But there was one city that refused to submit, Harlem. On December 11, 1572, the Spanish army arrived at the city, prepared to continue its path of total domination and destruction. But Harlem was surrounded by tall stone walls. Inside, the citizens were determined to fight, including women and children. One of those women was Kainau. She was 47 years old and physically imposing. As the owner of a shipyard, Kainau had plenty of wood at her disposal. It's said that she lent a significant amount of wood to the city to help build barricades and fix walls that were being shot at by cannons. Here's where Kainau's story gets a bit fuzzy. Legend has it that Kainau organized an army of 300 women. Under her command, they defended the walls of Harlem with swords, bricks, and cooking oil. But many historians refute this part of Kainau's contribution. They believe the extent of women's participation stopped at hand-to-hand -hand combat. This is partially because there were no women listed as war criminals. It doesn't help that the city's archive was also destroyed. What we do know is that every person in Harlem fought, hard. For several months, the Spanish held the city hostage, attacking with guns, swords, and cannonballs. But still, 
they struggled to overtake the city with the same ease with which they'd conquered so many other places. After a long seven months of fighting, rebuilding, and re-strategizing, Harlem finally surrendered to the Spanish on July 13, 1573. The city was too low on food and ammunition to continue. In exchange for a large ransom, the Spanish forces didn't pillage what was left of the port city. They did execute anyone they could prove had taken up arms against them. Although Harlem did ultimately fall, it proved that the Spanish were not invincible. They had their vulnerabilities. It revived a sense of hope among rebel groups. Canal left Harlem and ran her business abroad. She returned in the late 1570s when the city was no longer under Spanish rule. Canal resumed running the shipyard, but never forgot about all the materials she'd lent the city. She requested to be paid back, and when she didn't receive her money, she wrote to multiple city officials explaining how she'd helped defend Harlem during the siege. In 1588, Canal went out on a trading expedition to Scandinavia. She never returned. There was no evidence, but her daughters believed she fell victim to pirates. At the time, Canal was the epitome of a heroine. In art, she's depicted as a brave fighter. The term Canal even used to describe a heroic woman. But during the 19th century, it began to take on a different meaning. Today, a Canal was an unpleasant, bossy, unfeminine woman. Over time, what Canal represented no longer fit the national sentiment of the role that women were supposed to play. The family ideal, where women played an inferior role, had no place for a strong, confident woman who knew her worth. Whether Canal simply donated wood or courageously led an army of women into battle, she represents a time in Dutch history when strong women were celebrated and valued. All month, we're talking about folk heroes. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. As always, we're taking a break for the weekend. Talk to you on Monday. A new podcast from the creators of Up and Vanished. Louisville police are searching for a missing 24-year-old woman. When I read about Alana Chen's disappearance, I couldn't look away. (laughs) A shy girl from Boulder who wanted to be a nun since she was a teenager. So Alana was like sneaking out to go to church. But she kept a secret, one that was slowly tearing her apart. I didn't know she was attracted to girls. No, she didn't tell me. Yes, the mother says her daughter first opened up to a priest at her church when she was just 14 years old. However, the church denies any conversion therapy was done. She didn't tell me. She told him. She confessed to him. From Tenderfoot TV comes a new podcast about the price we pay to belong and the systems that pay no price at all. This is Dear Alana. Listen for free on the iHeartRadio app or Apple Podcasts. For an exclusive binge of the whole season, subscribe to Tenderfoot Plus at tenderfootplus.com. In our 22 years of friendship, Andy, this has to be the most bizarre thing we've ever done. I know. I love it. Our podcast, My Vagina Said What, is a podcast where we ask our everyday vagina listeners to pull up a seat at the best friend's table as we share our most personal and humiliating stories and ask questions about women's bodies. We are going to discuss all body things. Like, what exactly are we supposed to do with our pubes? Oh my gosh. If you could have a heart-shaped pube that were bedazzled in pink rubies. Perimenopause. I feel right now justified. I'm going to start my own personal movement. I'm going to start blaming anything that goes wrong in my life on perimenopause. Leg hair too long. Perimenopause. (laughs) (laughs) Don't have the will to clean. Perimenopause. Exactly our whack periods, boob issues, and so much more. Listen to My Vagina Said What podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. What? Hey, I'm Wilmer Valderrama, executive producer of the new podcast, De My Abuelita First. Each week, the incredible Vico Ortiz and fabulous abuelita Liliana Montenegro will play matchmaker for a group of hopeful romantics. Right, Vico? You know it. Listen to Dave My Abuelita First, Thursdays on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And remember, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Just do it better. Besitos.